typically, I think people go way overboard when they pump these NXT takeover shows full of smoke. I'm always like, were they really that, that good? Or have your standards and expectations been lowered that much? And that's really what I feel like more of what it is. That said, I do understand why people sit there and say that these NXT TakeOver shows make the big WWE pay-per-views look really bad, specifically the big four pay-per-views, because you most certainly could make that case this weekend. NXT TakeOver Philly, far from a perfect show, but much better than this in general shit show that we got, which was the 2018 Royal Rumble, and that's right, I said a shit show. S-H-I-T shit, for those of you that can't frickin' spell. This show sucked. Flat out. I'm sure you'll see plenty of other people pumping this full of smoke because the people they wanted to win, win, and that's all that matters. And no, it absolutely is not the case. Trash is trash. And so much about this show was absolute trash, in my not-so-humble opinion. Looking at the WWE Championship match, the two-on-one handicap match, AJ Styles defending against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Oh boy, cameo. How sad it is that the WWE Championship, the WWE Championship, is curtain jerking at a big four pay-per-view. This title that has been the crux of so many main event WrestleMania storylines over the years is opening the 2018 Royal Rumble. It's sad, but the truth is it should have. This match had one person I cared about in AJ Styles and two that I don't. You know who the other two are. In a match built around a story that I don't give a shit about. And I'm frankly, I think I'm not alone in that sentiment. A lot of other people didn't care about this either. So the match happens. It's solid for what it is. These guys try to go out there and do something cool. But it just kind of falls flat because, again, the whole premise of this is just dumb. AJ Styles retains, thank the heavens, he actually, in my opinion, pinned the right guy in Kevin Owens. Now, can this story be done and can we move the hell on? And furthermore, if this is starting to lead to Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn at WrestleMania one more time, but this time we'll pretend it really matters, fuck you WWE. SmackDown Tag Team Championship. The Usos come out, and as they're talking on the mic, I think one of them dropped the line that they have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose, but this is a tag team title match. Don't you have your tag titles at stake? Couldn't you potentially lose your tag team titles? Or perhaps, after celebrating your victory, couldn't you perhaps lose your driver's license if you don't ask Sami Zayn to wait around for you so that way you get the advantage of that built-in Uber driver to take you where you need to go? I'm just saying, nothing to lose, nothing to lose, I don't think so. I did also want to point out Shelton Benjamin, 42 years of age. This dude damn still looks like he's 22. He's a freak. Now, where was his mama? That's what I want to know. As far as the match, it took a long time to get to this first fall. And they did a lot of crap in this. And then we got that first fall. And then almost instantly it felt like we got the second fall. And I'm fine with a two out of three falls match only going two falls because too often these matches always go the distance and they shouldn't always be the case. But it was really weird the spacing of this. Like we're trying to kill so much time in the first fall and then as soon as the first fall happens we're like, oh, we didn't need to kill that much time. We need to hurry up and go home right away in the second fall. It was just weird. I'm okay with doing the second fall and that being it. But not in the way this was done. This was lame, and this match didn't really resonate with the audience, and it most certainly did not resonate with me. Just like most of this night really didn't resonate with me, because the third match on the card, the third match on the card, again, I will emphasize, the third match on this freaking card was the Men's Royal Rumble match. Not the third to last. Not the second to last. Not the main event. This match went on third. 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 And I will say this. I had opined on Twitter before the show that I didn't think Roman was winning, but more specifically as the rumor got started to get out there, I think it was reported by PW Insider and others, that the Women's Royal Rumble match was main eventing. I thought there's no way in hell Roman is actually winning this match if it's not going to be second to last or last. There's no way their golden boy is going to win a Rumble in the middle of the damn card. It's going to be somebody from SmackDown that the company kind of cares about, but not really. 
which ultimately is what happened. But some of the highlights here. Rusev Day lasted over 30 minutes. That was cool. CN almost got a nice run here, the NXT champion, and Adam Cole also participated. That said, the first 40 minutes or so, 35 to 40 minutes of this uh, Rumble match were pretty lame. As you got through the first 20 entrants specifically, it really sucked. It was really dragging. There was nothing really of interest going on. Then number 21, hey, it's the Hurricane. And he's gone. He told the WWE if they needed him, he was there. He came in and he was gone. Fuck you, John Cena. And then at number 27, I think it was, out comes Rey Mysterio and he looked great. I don't know personally if I'd be wanting to sell that 619. I'm just saying because that's a lethal killing move. Which just amps up the level of seriousness that I take this guy because he can literally kill people in the ring now. But again, Rey Mysterio, I hope it wasn't a one-off thing. I hope he actually is back because, man, that Cruiserweight division could really use him. Or, frankly, SmackDown could really use him. Hell, Raw could really use him at this point. He looked really, really good. And how fitting and appropriate was it that number 30, this valuable spot, the last entrant, went to a guy in Dolph Ziggler who is the ultimate epitome of a waste of space. He wins a U.S. title to vacate it, to come back here at the Royal Rumble, last a few minutes, do nothing, and nobody cares. Because ultimately, once and for all, this moment, if anything else, should have taught you the important lesson of why I always come back to... You know the rest. Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Unbelievable. This match finally did pick up, truly, when we got to the final four. It was Finn Balor, it was John Cena, it was Shinsuke Nakamura, it was Roman Reigns. And at that point in time, you felt like any of these four guys could really legitimately win because you had some questions about which direction this company was going to go. And it really felt like, specifically when we got down more so to the last two of Nakamura and Reigns, but as a couple of people pointed out on Twitter with the final four, it felt like this. It was like it was Vince versus the hardcore fans, who Vince envisions as a Royal Rumble winner and who the hardcore WWE fans want as a Royal Rumble winner. And the dynamics of this really playing out as the muscle freaks and Cena and Reigns kind of tag team together and the indie darlings of Shinsuke and Balor kind of tag together. You know, this was a big spot for Finn. Uh, he went over 58 minutes. So, you know, he, 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 he did his thing for his time, that's for sure. Um... And at least I will say this, hashtag thank you Balor for eliminating that suspect sissy Dolph Ziggler. See, even people I don't like I can give credit to. But then, thank you Cena for eliminating Finn Balor. Because there was a certain small segment of me that was really fearful that Finn Balor was going to win this Rumble. Even though I really felt at that point that it was going to be Shinsuke. Because ultimately Raw has the Elimination Chamber. It makes more sense to have a number one contender's Elimination Chamber match than it does a WWE Universal title match. Especially when Brock Lesnar, you knew damn good and well, was re going to retain in his match later on in the night anyways. So it felt like this was SmackDown bound all the way and I was ultimately right. Shinsuke Nakamura eliminates Roman Reigns. The drama was real, like it was palpable. You could feel it, and it could get to you emotionally. I will at least give the finish of this Royal Rumble that. It got you. It could hook you, and I'm sure it did hook a lot of people, regardless of if they were Reigns or Nakamura or neither or both. It was a good finish. It's just a good finish with the guy that most of you wanted to win winning. Doesn't change the fact that the vast majority of this match pretty much sucked. It just went by and nothing really happened. It was overall lame with a much stronger finish, which helped, but doesn't wash over everything, especially when this match went about an hour and five damn minutes. I'm sorry, it doesn't. And what else is really weird with this? With having Shinsuke win right in the middle of the show, you know that you're going to have a massive letdown as you get ready to go to the Women's Rumble that's closing out the night. And the Raw Tag Team Championship match was the perfect example of this. It's the bar versus the Champions Club of Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan. And I want to point out that a match featuring Seth Rollins and Cesaro was the ultimate piss break on this show. It really, truly was. And you can blame Jason Jordan all you want, but that is not the only factor here. It was just a match that wasn't very interesting, a story that wasn't very interesting, and it really ended up being a match that was flat, and it really felt like it was too early to already really be starting the breakup between Rollins and Jordan. It was just dumb. It happened, 
and now The Bar are the four-time WWE Raw Tag Team Champions, and they've won four tag team titles, and even the WWE doesn't even freaking know, because after the match happened, they tweeted out congratulations to the now three-time Tag Team Champions in The Bar. It's four times. It's four times. It's four times WWE, and it's four times. Your social media team is full of idiots. They can't even get that right when it literally had just been said on commentary 30 seconds before you tweeted it out. The Universal Title Match, what more do you want to say? You've been there, done that. It's like lather, rinse, repeat with this crap. Braun smashed, Lesnar won. We've seen it before. What more can I really say? Other than it was interesting when Braun stiffed uh, Brock with that knee, how quickly Brock responded with his receipt, and then he hit him, and then he smacked him with that stiff right hand, and he said something to him, probably told him, watch your shit, slow the fuck down. Whatever the case might be, like Brock hasn't stiffed anybody. Eh, it's not fun, is it, bitch? But it is interesting how the WWE is still setting this up. With the Men's Royal Rumble match, they gave you the match finish that a lot of the fans wanted. They gave you Nakamura winning the Rumble, and then for some reason forced him to immediately decide who he's going to face off with at WrestleMania. Hey, Josh, Josh. But the WWE, Vince McMahon, the powers that be, that really matter, now can still do what the hell they want. They still had Roman Reigns go to the final two of this year's Royal Rumble, again. So that way, they could sit there and have him go into that Elimination Chamber match, pin Braun Strowman to become the number one contender, and then he will go on to WrestleMania to challenge Brock Lesnar still anyways for the damn WWE Universal title, where he's going to at least kick out of two or more F5s and become the new champion. It will be really interesting as well to see the way this has been set up with kind of the lameness of Lesnar's title reign. If you're going to get to a point where even though it's Roman and even though it's Mania, is this match going to get completely booed out of the building because people are sick of freaking Lesnar as well? Or are some people actually going to cheer for Reigns because they're tired of Lesnar's part-time suck-ass title reign? WWE, the masters of manipulation. Anyways, enough of that crap. Yeah, that match was exactly what you thought it was. It wasn't very long, and it wasn't very fun. Then we get to the Women's Royal Rumble match. And once you saw that this was going to main event, you knew somehow, some way, what this was going to revolve around if you had any brain matter at all. Now, some of us thought that that certain individual was going to enter at number 30, and ultimately she didn't. But based off of the way she did debut, and she was featured, and what she did, maybe she should have. But what happened in this historic first ever Women's Royal Rumble match that main evented the 2018 Royal Rumble. Sasha Banks went 54 minutes and didn't do shit, up to and including not connecting on any of her kicks in the corner against Lita. Check it on the internet. You'll see it'll probably be one of the few things that'll actually go viral about the show outside of Rousey's debut and maybe Asuka and Nakamura winning their damn Rumble matches. You got plenty of returns here where you didn't have many in the men's side. You had no choice but to have them on the women's side. You had Lita, you had Tori Wilson, Molly Holly, Michelle McCool, Vicky Guerrero, Kelly Kelly, Miss Jacqueline, Beth Phoenix. All types of nostalgia pops, all types of returns from the past. And it was really striking specifically to me anyways for my flavor when you saw individuals like Tori Wilson and Molly Holly and even Kelly Kelly, who's really grown and matured nicely, you look at them and you see the bow-wow factor that is this women's roster, by and large, for WWE, and it makes you shake your damn head. Like, these women are now in their 30s and their 40s, and they put these other heifers to shame, and it's true. But what was really messed up about this is of all the women, Michelle McCool gets the most Rumble eliminations with five? This bitch hasn't wrestled in over half a decade? And you're letting her eliminate five people? Like, this is your first ever women's Rumble match? And you're not going to give it to Nia or Sasha Banks or somebody else that's actually going to be there full-time? You're going to give it to some overrated-ass heifer who the only reason you ever pushed her to the moon to begin with was because she was doink and taker, ultimately Mary taker, and had some babies with her. Now we're going to sit there and use this as a potential bargaining chip? Or is an appeasement to The Undertaker to try and get one more crappy match out of him that most of us don't want to see? Give me a freaking break. You got the big Kofi spot in this, this time out of Naomi, and it was kind of cool in theory when you think about it, but of course it's got to be the black woman that does it, because that's just what we do, see Kofi. But as, as you're sitting here going through all this rigmarole and walking on the freaking 
barricade and trying to get on Maria Menounos's chair and doing the hop and doing all this stuff. The whole premise of the Royal Rumble is both feet have to touch the ground. Why would you not brace yourself, get off the barricade, hop on one foot, and get back in the ring? Why do we need to go through all of this? Why do we have to go through all of this? And why would we not call this stupid? It is freaking stupid, especially when you have him do all this, just like you did with Kofi in his oh shit spot with the pancakes and crap in the men's Royal Rumble match, just to sit there and get eliminated immediately afterwards, because that's what the hell they do. And at this point, I'm just sitting there and I'm like, let's get to number 30, let's get to number 30, let's get to the inevitable. And I'm like, nah, number 30 can't be her because you can't tell me you had Lita there and then you're not going to have Trish Stratus there and then you have both of them in the same Rumble match but they don't have a face-off when you're talking about making history. These two women that main evented Raw back in 2004 and did so much for the women of WWE over the years and that's exactly what they did. They bounced Lita's ass early as hell in this, but number 30 was Trish Stratus. This was almost like, as a lot of the people started looking for Rousey, anticipating Rousey, chanting for Rousey, the WWE was like, we're not going to do Rousey here, but we dare you to boo Trish Stratus. We absolutely double dog dare you to boo her, because we know you don't have the balls or the guts to do so. And you know what? They were absolutely right. We're not booing Trish Stratus, period. Just, there's no way. And yes, fuck Sasha Banks for going so long and not doing shit. And fuck Sasha Banks for eliminating Trish Stratus. That's stupid. Not as stupid as Michelle McCool eliminating more people than Nia Jax, but still pretty damn stupid. But then we get to the whole heart of the matter, which is ultimately, once you knew Rousey wasn't entering at number 30, it was like, inevitability, it's going to be Asuka. And of all the people that Asuka has to battle with or struggle with, it's not a Nia Jax, it's not a Sasha Banks that's gone 50-some damn minutes. It's the freaking Bella Sluts who, when was the last time they freaking wrestled? When? Is Nikki Bella's last match literally WrestleMania 33? Or am I forgetting something else along the way? And when the hell was the last time that Brie Bella wrestled the damn match? Asuka, this big powerhouse who never lost on NXT was a long-ass reigning women's champion, undefeated and all that jazz, is struggling with these freaking model twins that aren't much of models to begin with, that aren't that good-looking, and sure as hell aren't very good in the ring. Like, how stupid is this? Like, Asuka's supposed to view these two Bella Slut twins as threats? Like, they're supposed to challenge her? And even the way this whole thing finished... And it was amazing. You saw the political power that some of these women have within WWE. Like Michelle McCool got more eliminations than anybody because of who she's doinking. Trish Stratus got to come in at number 30 and got some shine because she's Trish Stratus. And then the Bellas, specifically Brie Bella because she's married to Daniel, and of course specifically the massive political player similar to Michelle McCool and Nikki Bella is going to get so much run and get taken so seriously and make it to the final two because why wouldn't she? She's doinking John Cena and engaged to his ass. These women, some of them in WWE's history, know how to play the political power game and play it very well. And I will give the Bellas credit for this. They have been able to do that over the years. But in this particular case, I just farted at the whole finish of this damn women's rumble match, which was so stupid. With the nostalgia of seeing these different women, which was cool, and at the same time depressing, reminding you of the quality of women you used to get, and then the quality of women you get now. Then you look at it and you see Asuka, your big powerhouse, is struggling with the Bella Sluts. And then the way you did the finish, like Asuka barely squeaked it out, was just trash. It was just trash. Not as trash as Stephanie McMahon doing commentary for the entirety of this women's match, where it's almost kind of a quasi-Art Donovan type of thing, with none of the charm and none of the appeal whatsoever. Just her grating, annoying voice chiming in like she's saying something that is relevant, and everybody else is trying to tell her, shut the fuck up, we know you're the boss's daughter, but you don't know sit shit, so sit down and look like you got fake boobs and mom arms. Oh wait, you do. And where's your ass going? So Asuka wins, and in come the two champions, because again, we're trying to set this up like the Royal Rumble winner has to make the decision right then, that right there. Why the hell would they do that? And then some weird music hits. And WWE's production team can't even get this right. They're showing the women. They show the stage for a quick second, but then they're showing back to the women. They don't know what the hell they're doing at this point. How appropriate. It's freaking Ronda Rousey. 
coming out to this weird ass music with her hot rod tribute, oh whoopity freaking do, coming out and smiling, can't keep a straight face, can't be serious about none of this shit. She comes into the ring as Asuka is supposed to have her moment, have this big shine, and they just totally take it away from Asuka, and frankly, at the same time, take it away from Ronda Rousey because they're sharing this spot, and that's not the way it should have been. If Rousey was going to be there, she should have been in the damn match, and she should have won the damn Rumble. That way you avoided this crap. Instead, what they did, they were like, well, we want to have the completion of the Japanese invasion, which is cool in and of itself that both Nakamura and Asuka are the two Rumble winners. This is WWE. You probably never thought they would do something like this, and I most certainly did not, and I am proud of them for it. But the fact is, is if you were going to do this, and this was the way you were going to feature Rousey, this was the way you were going to de debut Rousey, and you were going to put this abortion of an abomination of a debut, debut out there, then she should have been in the damn match anyways, enter number 30, and win the freaking thing. Because this was trash. Her sitting there not being able to take a, keep a straight face, her awkward pointing at the WrestleMania sign, and at Alexa and at freaking Asuka, and then pointing at Charlotte, and then smirking and saying, we'll see you there, and then walking around to Stephanie McMahon, and that weird-ass handshake thing they were doing, this was dumb. Like, you intentionally main-evented your Women's Royal Rumble match, because this was supposed to be your big freaking deal. This was going to be the thing that sent the people home happy. This was supposed to be the thing that made you sit there and say, my goodness... This women's division is big business now. They are really picking it up. This is a revolution. And if this is the revolution that you're going to get, then this revolution will be quickly shut down. This debut, if you saw it, you know it. Once you get past the fact, oh, this is something you've been waiting for for three years. Isn't that part of the point? You had three years. You knew this was an eventuality. You knew this was going to happen. And this, this steaming pile of grade A hot rod crap is what you came up with. You decided to take the shine off of Asuka and awkwardly pigeonhole and shoehorn Ronda Rousey into this to where everybody is confused and not in a good way wondering what's going to happen. Confused like what the fuck just happened here? Like this big bad bitch who came from the UFC world you've been waiting for years for you have her come out smiling and pointing, and she can't even keep a straight face. This was just an abomination of a botch of an execution of what was supposed to be a big freaking deal. And that music, like she's supposed to be this intimidating badass, and that's the music you're going to play? It was really hard to take her seriously as she's coming out to that music. I'm sorry it was. In theory, it's cool that Nakamura and Asuka won their Rumble matches. I give you that. But most of the other matches on this card were a gigantic waste of time. The Rumble matches themselves were largely crap. And in particular, when you look at the execution of the Ronda Rousey debut that's been three years in the fucking making, this Royal Rumble show absolutely fucking sucked. And I don't care what anybody says to try and tell me otherwise. If you didn't like my review of this too damn bad, go watch some of these other fanboys that go sucking their schlong of the WWE all the freaking time. I'm going to keep it straight, and I'm going to keep it true and honest with you, even if you don't always agree with me, even if it sometimes leaves you butthurt, or leaves me butthurt. Because remember, I'm the Schleg Daddy, and most importantly of all, this is OTRS Central, and just like the t-shirt says, it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. And I feel like as everybody else starts talking about the Royal Rumble, that's going to be very true. This is the show that you need to give it to you real.